We're talking to Katie Spots right here. We've been talking to her in the commercial break. An extraordinary woman. Katie Spots, who made history on Sunday, becoming the youngest person and the first woman to row alone across the Atlantic. You know, it's incredible. 70 days, mm -hmm. uh, more than 2,800 miles of, of open ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the first question is just why? I'm Katie. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I just moved here to Maine. I'm in the Coast Guard and I'll be stationed here for the next three years. Growing up in Cleveland was actually really, uh, I had like a really fun childhood. We were allowed to play in the mud and be outside all day and ride our bikes around. And I just had a lot of really happy memories as a kid. It wasn't until probably my teen years that some of that changed. Everyone responds to their upbringing differently. And for me, I really look to perfectionism as the solution. As long as I'm perfect, then my family, my family will be great. There were a lot of times that I felt so small and so out of control of the circumstances. And without that sense of control, I needed to find it somewhere else, and running became that. Running for me is the place that I feel most at peace. Running is exploring new places. Running is finding out how far you can go. Your world just becomes bigger, like, oh, I never thought I could run two miles or three miles or five miles or 10 miles, and I did, and then you start questioning everything. Like, if I said, there's no way I could run 10 miles, and I just did. And what are all those other stories of impossibility? 22-year-old Katie Spots has cycled across the country, run through the Mojave Desert, and was the first to swim the length of the Allegheny River. Is this a piece of cake? But nothing compares to this. <laughs> oh, not at all. Was this is the hardest by far. In January of 2010, I set off from West Africa with uh, two sets of oars. I had four iPods, 300 chocolate bars, and set off to row a tiny 19-foot rowboat, completely alone, no follow boat, for two and a half months, becoming the youngest person to do it until reaching landfall in South America. Welcome to my rowboat. I'll give you a quick tour. Um, right over here. It is really hard to explain what those 70 days were like there's really nothing else to do but row. And I was rowing for as many hours as I could a day, which was about 10 to 12. When I wasn't rowing, I could be blogging. Uh, I tried to sleep. Um, sometimes I would jump in to scrub off barnacles on the side of the boat and um, do a little bit of snorkeling and see all the wildlife and all the sea creatures down there. And I've been alone at sea. I haven't seen another human for 55 days. My emotions were definitely on a roller coaster. Like when I was happy, I was ecstatic. When I was sad, I was devastated. I did have moments where I, I didn't know where I'd find the strength to continue on. But she did. And in the process, she raised $75,000 for a group supplying clean drinking water to people worldwide. I definitely feel like I was more prepared for the row than what had happened like as a result of the row. Like I was going from complete solitude, which was more my comfort zone anyways. It was my little controlled universe. And then all this attention. It was just this constant buzz and it was great because it could be used to be a voice for the voiceless with clean water, but it, it did come with a toll. If you don't know God, something else becomes it. And for me, it was achievement. I bought the lies of achievement. It was like I was duped. I was like, where is it? I don't feel content. I just feel just as insecure, I had that extreme thirst for more and this discontentment that I put so much into it and then I didn't feel like I 
got what the, the promise of achievement would bring. I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't go out speaking to thousands of people, be on the road all the time because it didn't feel like me. You know, I didn't feel like the people they were describing because of how much depression and how much sadness and how much confusion and how lost I felt. So that grew and it grew to the point where I just couldn't tolerate it anymore. I didn't want to wake up. I didn't want to face another day when every single day was just carrying a mask and falling deeper into that hole. I had no interest in continuing. I didn't care. I, there was nothing left. I was at a museum with my friend, Megan. We came up to the Lucy exhibit and it was all about evolution. And I could tell my friend Megan was a little bit hesitant and then it just came out and it was just pouring out of her about her faith and her belief. And there was no doubt in her mind that, that it's God. So she invited me to church. Once I made the decision, I started seeing it and seeing it and seeing it more and more. And then it's like the footprints in the sand, like you knew he was there the whole time. I just think it's crazy how believing one lie can completely change your life and that's love is earned. When you no longer attach to love is earned, it frees you to receive this never-ending love. It may not seem like my life has changed because I was running in the past and I'm running now, but there is a difference. And before, I was running on fear. Right now, I'm running on joy. Before, I was running on anxieties and what-ifs, and now it's running on eagerness. It's like taking that polar opposite and transforming it into that good for what God had intended to use it for in the first place. There's no words that can and will ever be able to justify how good and amazing God is. And that's what we as Christians get to do is to constantly witness God's goodness and his love for us. And I mean, if that's not an adventure, I don't know what is.